Hello, um, this is Albert van Dijk and in this video I want to talk a little bit about passive microwave remote sensing. So um, just reminding you what we've uh, uh, dealt with in previous videos. So we've previously talked about uh, a lot about the uh, visible part of the spectrum. We've talked about uh, a little bit about gamma rays which we can use. Uh, we, we talked about the fact that much of this region of the spectrum it is obscured uh, by the, uh, the atmosphere, that is the atmosphere doesn't let through that sort of radiation. Uh, we talked about infrared and we talked about the fact that there's a region here where you don't measure a lot of radiation coming from the Earth as well, that's intercepted by the atmosphere. But once we get into this domain, microwaves and radio waves, uh, we can start uh, measuring the Earth's surface again. And um, that's what um, um, we're going to have a look at here. So um, depending on exactly what wavelength you're looking at, you, the uh, microwave radiation might uh, be passing through the atmosphere more or less unobstructed and we call these things atmospheric windows uh, but in some frequencies you've got clear absorption features as we call them uh, that is uh, there are components in the atmosphere such as uh, uh, oxygen in this case uh, and uh, water in that case that really absorb in that wavelength um, we're not, we won't go into why that is but what that means is depending on what you're interested in uh, you might be uh, more wa wanting to measure in one of these windows if you're more interested in your surface. But uh, for instance, um, if you're interested in how much moisture is in the atmosphere, then actually you can measure in this region or in this region here. You can get a pretty good idea of the um, distribution of moisture in the atmosphere, be it as vapor or as uh, uh, cloud or as droplets. Um, and we, we tend to call that uh, atmospheric sounding because, um, because of the approach taken in measuring that. But um, what I really want to focus on in this video is how we measure the Earth's surface in these atmospheric windows. Now, the good thing about microwave radiation, it doesn't really mind uh, a, a cloud or things like that. Uh, so that's a big benefit of optical remote sensing, which tends to um, uh, um, you know, become pretty useless once there's a cloud within the field of view. Uh, microwave suffers from that much less. Um, and so, as I said before in one of the videos, there's a difference between passive methods and active methods. So passive methods measure the naturally emitted radiation or reflected radiation. In the case of passive microwave, we're really measuring the emissions from the Earth uh, itself. And just uh, recalling uh, Planck's law, which uh, states that uh, you can uh, predict the peak uh, frequency or peak wavelength of the emitted radiation of a black body if you know its temperature and so we, the earth we do know its temperature and so we can uh, already uh, tell that most of the radiation is emitted in a sort of the thermal infrared region which we talked about previously uh, but this long tail continues into the microwave range you can't see anything here uh, but if you were to plot it on a, on a log normal scale for instance you would actually see that there is still some emissions there but it's not a lot but it has some really useful features, and that's what we're going to have a look at. So here's a, a sort of a, a zoom in of that area of the uh, microwave wavelength. So you see here the centimeters, so that indicates we're talking about microwave wavelength. Uh, and, um, and you can see that even here, this is, this is a log scale, that the energy drops off very quickly. So it's much easier to measure in this region than in this longer wavelength region. On the other hand, uh, there tends to be more interference from things like uh, uh, drop, water droplets and clouds and such in the, in the shorter wavelengths than in these longer wavelengths which penetrate through the atmosphere and through clouds uh, much better. Um, so the side effect of that is that we can measure in all these frequencies and, and wavelengths but depending on uh, uh, that wavelength we may need uh, a, a much larger collection area if you like. We need, may need to look at a larger area to collect enough energy <coughs> uh, for the sensor to to give a good measurements, and that's what you see here. So we're looking here at um, at uh, five different bands, uh, and I'll let you look up uh, if you want, or, you know, what the uh, corresponding code would be for those bands. I admit I don't always have that at the top of my head either. Uh, but what you see here is that uh, with a a, 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 a a lower frequency, so a longer wavelength, we're going to need a much larger footprint uh, to collect enough energy to give a, a good measurement, and and vice versa. I can have quite more detailed, but still quite large footprints uh, at, uh, at the higher frequencies. And that's an important feature because that means that we can't really look very sharply, if you like, with uh, passive microwave remote sensing. So even we can, though we can look through a cloud and whatnot, uh, we cannot get a very detailed picture. Typically. 
Um, now, the other thing that comes into it is it's not just the temperature that depends the uh, that uh, determines the emission of uh, microwave radiation. It's also the, also the emissivity of the surface. We saw we've seen that in uh, previous uh, videos uh, for thermal infrared, for instance. But it's it's true for all emitting bodies, as we know. Um, so we have to consider the uh, uh, emiss emissive property, uh, the emissivity. Uh, to work out the what part of the signal is due to the temperature. In other words, if we want to know the temperature, we need to know the emissivity. If you want to know the emissivity, we need to know the temperature. Um, we need to know one of those two in order to uh, back out the other one. And so, um, typically, uh, not always, but typically, uh, passive microwave remote sensing of the Earth's surface is used to uh, know more about the state of the surface. So we want to know the emissivity rather than temperature. So we might use a different way of estimating or measuring the temperature and try and back out that emissivity because that is a good measure of, for instance, how much water is at the surface. Water, as you can see here, uh, has got a far far higher dielectric constant in the order of uh, something like 80 than, uh, uh, um, let's say, dry materials such as stone or, or soil, which have far lower uh, emissivities. And you can also see that ice and snow have got a far lower emissivity than liquid water as well. And that's really useful too, and so we can of course use passive microwave remote sensing to look for, uh, for instance, uh, ice in the ocean and things like that. Uh, now you might wonder, why is that? Okay, so the, the, the reason for that difference is, is that uh, free water molecules, as they are more or less in, uh, in liquid water, can align themselves with the electromagnetic field. And uh, that basically means uh, that uh, they've got very different property from ice and snow, in which the molecules are aligned in a, in a, in a rester, in a, in a configuration, uh, and cannot move around freely like that. And so they respond much differently, uh, interact much, uh, much differently with the um, um, radiation. So as I said before, the emissivity and the dielectric constant can be inferred if the temperature of the emitting surface is known. Uh, and so that can be done, for instance, uh, by looking at different polarizations. I won't go into the details because it's fairly technical, but basically, um, uh, you, you may recall from uh, high school physics that uh, any electromagnetic radiation has, uh, has polarizations, a vertical and a horizontal component. Uh, and for instance, your Polaroid glasses filter out one of those components, uh, as you can see in this example here, just as a reminder. So uh, in this case, uh, you won't see your computer screen because it, uh, it, it uh, sends out polarized light and um, you know if you, if you hold your glasses, your sunglasses in the right way or in the wrong way you won't actually see the screen anymore. So that polarization is important when we do it with microwave radiation because we can use that feature uh, to estimate the uh, temperature and the emissivity or the dielectric constant separately uh, and that is because um, the uh, the um, uh, uh, properties, the dielectric properties, vary as a function of polarization. And most land and ocean surfaces, as it says here, uh, emit uh, uh, partially at least polarized radiation. So um, that was a summary of the principles of passive microwave remote sensing. And then in the next video, uh, I want to look at uh, some of the applications of it and how we actually measure it.